welcome back. I'm Carly King at the Creative City Centre and today's quick craft is we're going to do some weaving. So I thought I would bring this a little demo. Uh, this It's a wall, uh, woven wall hanging. So we're going to uh, go through the steps to make one of these. And um, yeah, my son Ruben actually made this when he was seven. So weaving is very accessible to all. Okay, so I'm just going to put this to the side. All right, so what the materials that you'll need for this is um, a piece of cardboard. And I actually just cut out the top of a pizza box. <laughs> but it can be any, anything. Uh, but you want some uh, cardboard that's a little thicker that's going to hold its shape. A pair of scissors, some string, and then whatever kind of yarn you want your woven piece to be. Okay, so again, similar to um, the braided rug, I don't know if you saw that one, but I'm gonna do a mini version of this so that I can show you the process, but then you decide how, what size you want your weaving to be. So again, I'm gonna make a little mini one to go through the steps in our quick crafts, but you can decide your, the size that you want. Um, also, maybe like sometimes it's best to start out small just to get a feeling for it and then move on to two larger pieces. Okay, so uh, first we're going to make our cardboard loom. So I'm going to just cut this cardboard to a smaller size. Um, yeah, like that should be good. Should be an okay size. And then you're going to cut just some little ridges at the top and the bottom of your cardboard. And you want them to be aligned. So again, just for demonstration purposes, let's start with four. So one, two, three, four, and then uh, align them up on the other side. And I should probably say, <laughs> Maybe I should have said this in previous videos. As you notice, I never measure everything. It's, it's like, well, I shouldn't say that, never. Sometimes I do measure. But um, if you are into like utmost precision, we could add a ruler to this supplies list for sure. And then you could measure them out so that you knew they were exactly. But I usually just eyeball it. And it's worked for me so far. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna take your string and you're going to tie a knot in it so that it doesn't come through the, let's call these like the teeth or, okay. So you're gonna string it through this first notch, like so, almost, almost like you're flossing teeth. And then, so when you tug on it, it doesn't come through. And seen the back of this, you now know what pizza I had the other night. <laughs> okay, uh, so then you're going to string back and forth. So you take the string and then you'll put it through this one, loop it around the back, and then string it through there, come down, string it along, let's say, this tooth, and back and forth around this one and back. And then you'll have to tie that knot again here so that it doesn't come out. My scissors are really clicking on the table today. And then tie a knot so it doesn't come out this way. All right, so now basically we're, we're ready to start weaving. Um, and I should have researched this before I started. One way is called, one's the warp and one's the weft. Weft, warp, 
Anyways, we don't have to get too technical about it, but this, the part that is on your weaving, um, that's up and down, you'll want like a, a cotton, a really strong string. You wouldn't want to use wool or anything natural fiber that's going to pull apart. So the one that is going uh, vertical, up and down, make sure it's really strong. Then for your weaving, you can choose any yarn you want. I like really chunky yarns for my weaving, especially if they're gonna be uh, wall hangings, then you get all the interesting little poof balls in the yarn coming through it. And also it goes a little faster. If you did chose a really thin yarn, this would take quite a while. All right, so you're going to unravel a little bit of it. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. Let's see, that might even be a bit much. Unravel a little bit. Okay, and then cut some off. Okay, so for your weaving, you're going to uh, pass the yarn under, over, under, over. And you're gonna leave a bit of a tail on the outside here. So starting on this first one, you're gonna pass the ball of yarn under, then over. That's why I said if it's too much, it, if I took too much, we might have to take, because you don't wanna compromise your, and um, you don't wanna compromise your tight, uh, these tight strings. You can get what's called a shuttle if um, you have one, which is just basically a fancy word for uh, a needle. That'll work too, but if you don't have one, like I don't have one right now, not a biggie. I'm just gonna tie my yarn it's tighter so it passes. Okay, so we went under, over, under, over. Then, so you, we've gone from left to right. Now we weave back from right to left the opposite pattern. So we ended on an over, which means coming back the other way you start with an under. So the whole of weaving is over, under, over, under, and then switch. Okay, and then you pull it down a little bit. So we went under, over, under, over. So now that was going from right to left. Now we're gonna go back from left to right. My ended on an over, so I'm gonna start with an under. So under. And once we've started weaving a bit, this will get smaller and smaller and it'll get easier. Over. Under. Over. So I wanna show you something. If you watch the, um, braided rug uh, video, I mentioned about tension, and tension means like how tight or loose something is, and tension really is the magic factor of any textiles. And so for this, I'm gonna just show you, if you start pulling too tight, you actually alter the vertical uh, white lines, and you won't have a straight woven piece. So the trick with your tension for weaving is you want it snug, of course, but you want to weave back and forth without altering the shape of the white lines. Okay, so we ended on uh, over, and now we'll go back. I'm gonna string this up again. Make it a bit easier. Okay, over, under. One thing that is my favorite, one of my favorite aspects of 
crafts is that there's usually um, a large a portion of it is this nice repetition. So you're saying something in your mind over and over again. So for this one, it's under, over, under, over. And it's usually something, a saying really simple, but it really grounds the mind, for me anyways it does. I just love it. See, and then your mind can wander and you can start humming. <laughs> Thinking about all the other things going on. And as you can see, in no time, you, uh, you'll have your little wo woven piece. I'm going to keep going here. Who knows, maybe the power of TV, this will be... This is kind of the mundane part of it. But it's got to be done. This is... And then always pull your, um, it's called combing actually. When you go like this and move the, the, uh, the yarn down, it's called combing. It's interesting too, whenever I do crafts like this, I, I must have, if you believe in reincarnation, I must have been lived in a time when this was just, you know, the thing to do was weave your own fabric and stuff. Because my mind actually goes to that a lot when I do weaving or knitting. I think, can you imagine? Think of how many clothes most people have nowadays. But think of a time when you had to weave the fabric before you even made a pair of pants or anything. Or a skirt or a shirt. With knitting as well, I someone I, I can't remember who it was, but it was an older woman one time telling me that you got one sweater a year. Your grandma or your great aunt or someone would knit you. You got one sweater for the year. <laughs> and of course you would, because right there's probably like ten people in your family, and like can you imagine grandma or whoever's knitting? Your great aunt, your uncle, knitting one sweater a month. Oh, this is going to be so cute. So this one's with chunky yarn, like I say, that's just a straight up weaving. But um, I, if you know what I'm talking about, you can get these yarns that look, well, maybe they are hand spun. A lot of them would be. And you get these little baubles of tufts of wool, tufts of yarn. And then you'd have some variation in the texture. Okay, so I had hoped that I, gave, I guessed the right amount of yarn to finish this off. And you know how I took some away? I was like, oh, that's too much. I should take some away. I shouldn't have done that. I would have guessed it just perfect. We have a little bit of space, but I'm going to carry on for demonstration purposes so that you know how to finish this off. Okay, so your last pass over a little uh, woven fabric. So our next step, you were going to end here. We were going to tie it off at the top and tie it off at the bottom. And then we have to put the top of the, I mean, you could leave it if you wanted, if you wanted a woven, um, little woven patch, like to put, you know, a little plant on or your coffee mug, then you would leave it. But I'm going to show you how you can, um, remember the first tapestry I showed you, how we can do it that way as well um, for a wall hanging. Okay, so you just tie off this loose end up here. Tie it on the last right hand 
white string, just take your yarn and tie it off like so. Okay, and then you can trim it up. And then on the bottom where we started, we've got this nice long tail so you can tie it off there as well. Oh, did I put it through? No, I didn't. And trim it off. Okay, so the, the top of it, now, normally I actually have a double-sided uh, knitting needle in my hair that I was gonna use for the top, but I was rushing and I grabbed my daughter's clip for my hair anyways. So you can use a stick, a uh, little piece of doweling. I kind of like the look of a stick, but um, it's pretty wintry out there this morning. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna use a pencil for demonstration purposes. So for the top here, you're gonna put the pencil, same as weaving, so over, under, over, under, to loop it through. And then you can take it off the top. And taking it off the top, once you've woven the pencil or your piece of wood, your stick, your doweling, whatever you have to secure it on top, then you can just kind of fold these teeth forward. And this will hold it. And then you can spread out the weaving. So it fills that in, like so. Now, for the bottom, if you like tassels, you could choose a different colored fabric, but for tassels, if you want really long ones, yeah, we could do a couple really long ones, why not? I'm gonna grab this other piece of cardboard we had. Find the end of my yarn, where is it? There it is. And we'll, we're going to wrap it around the cardboard the long way. Let's say one, two, three, four. Let's say four times, okay? Then we're gonna cut it off. Then we know it's the tassel is uh, equal length. Then we're gonna shimmy it, hold, pinch it here so it doesn't come, across, come apart. Okay, so we're gonna pinch it there. Okay, so on this side, oh, this is the side with the knots. Oh, just a second, we gotta do one thing before we get to here. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that down. You don't want it to come apart. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna create a couple more uh, loops. Okay, so take the far end string Put it through that middle loop and tie it around because we want three places where we can put a tassel. So this will be one, two, and three. So we'll tie this off here and then that'll be our... first one. Oh, the yarn's spraying a bit, so this might be a little more challenging than I thought, but we'll get there. There we go. So you see one, two, three. So you take your the yarn that we wrapped around the cardboard, pinch it off at the top. So have two on one side, two on the other, pinch it so there's a loop, push it through that first white loop, take, so then it's like this, we've got a loop there, take these ends and pull it through the loop like so, and then it ties tight, and then just clip open that second piece. So we're gonna do that first one, second one, third one. So since I have it flipped over, I'm gonna just finish making that third loop now. Um, so take the outside string, put it through the middle loop, and just tie it a little bit tighter, 
round here somewhere. So we have three loops for our tassels. Trim it off. I like these big scissors, but I almost like the little ones better. They've got sharper ends and then you can... Okay, so we're gonna do make two more tassels. And what did we say? Four, we ran around four times. So one, two, three, four. Line it up, trim it, pinch it at the top so it doesn't, and then take it off the cardboard, make, pinch it, put it through the middle white string loop, line them up so you have a little opening loop, take the ends, Put the ends through the loop and pull and then open them up one more time or however many, if you do a larger tapestry piece, you might be making more tassels. One, two, three, four, so that they're all nice and equal. Cut, pinch. Take it off and put it through the last loop. Make a hole for the ends to go through and tighten. All right. Okay, so now we have our tassels so we can take it off. And you might have to, oh yeah. Push those little teeth, what I've been calling the teeth up, then you're not, you're not, don't have to be too aggressive with it. It should just. Okay. And take it off your cardboard loom and then move the weaving around to your liking. And look, we have a little mini woven tapestry. Now, if we had a cute little stick up here, and again, my apologies that I don't have one, but you, you can use your imagination. You've got a little, little cute little stick up here or a piece of dowling. Then you can string it in. Well, you could use the white string or you could even use invisible or ribbon, whatever you want. And then you can hang your, your little tapestry on the wall. Perfect, great. Thanks for joining today's quick craft. Bye-bye.